हाई गाइज वेलकम टू माई पॉडकास्ट डब्ल्यू फाइव वा वुमन विनिंग वंडरफुल वर्ल्ड जब समय न्याय करता है तब गवाही की जरूरत नहीं पड़ती ईश्वर के न्याय की चक्की धीमी जरूर चलती है पर पिस्ती बहुत बारीक है इट इज नॉट अनकॉमन साइट टू वॉच फायर ब्रांड वुमन इन द ब्लैक फाइट फॉर ह्यूमन राइट इन द कोर्ट ऑफ लॉ बट डू यू नो हु फॉट फॉर दीज एक्सेप्शनल टू होल्ड देयर हेड्स हाई एंड आर्ग्यू इन द कोर्ट ऑफ लॉ एज अर्ली एज नाइनटीन ट्वेंटी फोर येस शी इज आर टूडेज वा वुमन कॉर्नेलिया सौरभ जी द फर्स्ट वुमन लॉयर कॉर्नेलिया हैड अ सीरीज ऑफ फर्स्ट टू हर क्रेडिट शी वॉज द फर्स्ट फीमेल ग्रेजुएट ऑफ बॉम्बे यूनिवर्सिटी टू बी एडमिटेड टू द अलाहाबाद हाई कोर्ट इन एटीन एटी नाइन शी बिकेम द फर्स्ट वुमन टू रीड लॉ एट ऑक्सफर्ड यूनिवर्सिटी एंड ऑल्सो फर्स्ट इंडियन टू स्टडी एट एनी ब्रिटिश यूनिवर्सिटी लास्ट बट सर्टेनली नॉट द लीस्ट शी बिकेम फर्स्ट वुमन टू प्रैक्टिस लॉ नॉट ओनली इन इंडिया बट ऑल्सो इन द होल ऑफ ब्रिटेन कॉर्नेलिया वॉज बॉर्न इन एटीन सिक्सटी सिक्स इन नाशिक टू रेवरेंट सौरभ जी अ पारसी एंड हिज वाइफ फ्रांसिया फॉर्ड a parsi adopted and raised by british couple cornelia was one of the nine children in saurabh ji household francia mother of cornelia was a champion of women's education and established several girls school in pune she would often be consulted by local women in matters of property inheritance and disputes and served as a great influence to young cornelia Cornelia was homeschooled by her father at several of their mission schools while her father ran pillar to post to get his two oldest daughter into Bombay University the authorities would not budge they were refused admission on the grounds that no woman had ever been to university but Cornelia was the only one among the lot to finally get entrance and matriculated at the age of 16 at college it was an everyday sight to see boys slamming classroom doors in her face to sabotage her chances of attending lectures they seemed threatened that a girl had finally upended norms and encroached in their domain she proved all naysayers wrong when in just 6 years she graduated topping her college in english literature having topped her batch cornelia was expecting a scholarship to england for higher studies all her hopes came crashing down when she was refused the award just because she was a woman her scholarship became a raging debate in the house of commons when sir john kenaway raised a question asking if a woman in british raj was denied a scholarship to an english university because of her gender the secretary of state of india confirmed it cornelia stood defeated but all hope was not lost some of the most prominent personalities of the time like mary hobhaus florence nightingale sir william wedderburn and others pulled money from their own pocket to fund cornelia's scholarship to oxford being a woman the doors of law, law studies were shut to her you can only read english literature she was told it was not until the arrival of influential academic and philosopher benjamin jowett that things changed for cornelia he arranged her for her to read law by getting a special law course devised he was among the english petitioners who helped her receive special permission by congregational decree to take the bachelor of civil laws exam at somerville college oxford making her yet again the first woman to ever to do so in 1892 it is a post graduate degree undertaken by barristers and undergrads in london with at least 5 years of training she was attempting to crack it in just 2 years she was knocked off when the examiner who refused to examine her at first gave her a third class in the exam despite having passed exam there was a rule 
that no woman was allowed to collect her degree for next 30 years. She started working for a year at solicitor's firm called Lee and Pemberton in London. An aristocrat Lord Hobhouse, also the husband of one of the women who funded her scholarship, got her special permission to read the in the library of Lincoln's Inn. Until then, women were not allowed to read at the library. She cl cleared bachelors of law the same year while practicing at solicitor's office. She decided to return to India with the hope of uplifting women. Her homecoming in 1894 marked yet another defeat. The then justice in Bombay passed an order telling legal practitioners to not to employ a woman. Her hope of working as solicitor crashed to the ground again. Despite having completed her postgraduate degree from Oxford, Cornelia felt undertaking an undergraduate degree in law from the Bombay University would help her alleviate her grievances. But everyone around her was set on sabotaging her effort. She was failed in her undergrad program. Even though the British Raj were adamant to not let a woman lawyer practice in the Bombay Presidency, the Maharajas were welcoming. But despite being offered the opportunity to become an advocate for the royals, they gave her only frivolous cases. One such case includes fighting for an elephant who stole bananas from a grove. The Maharaja himself was a culprit and the judge. The case was staged for sheer pleasure as they watched a woman lawyer put up a fight. By 1899, Cornelia was still tirelessly fighting for her right to be recognized as a barrister for five years. When nothing worked in her favor, she dedicated the next five years of her life inventing a role. At the moment, the plight of the Parda Nashins or secluded women in the country was unbearable. These were women who according to Hindu law wore a Parda and were forbidden from communicating with the outside male world. After marriage, they never saw the outside world again. They were barred from speaking to any male other than their husband. If they were widowed, they could not speak to any male at all. Their education stopped when they were married. They knew nothing about the law. Nonetheless, these were women who owned considerable property. But in case of disputes over the same property, they could never access legal help because all the lawyers were men. So now, Cornelia decided to become a legal advisor to the British government on the state of secluded woman. In 1904, when Lord Broderick was appointed Secretary of State for India, he demanded that a woman be appointed as advisor to secluded ones. Despite Viceroy Lord Curzon's disagreement, he gave her special permission to enter pleas on the behalf of Parda Nashins before British agents of Kathiawar and Indore principalities. During the next 20 years of service as a practicing lawyer, she helped over 600 women and orphans fight legal battles, sometimes charging them nothing at all. The major issues for these women in Parda, child brides and widows was that all the inherited property they had could only be used while the heirs were alive. They could access no control in case any of their child died. This made it a common for fraudsters to con these women and kill their children to seize their property. Cornelia not only protected them against fraud and murder attempts, but also set helped them experience freedom in ways unknown to them. She got six of them trained as nurses. The Parda still existed, but for women who had not seen the world outside their family since the age of four, it was a huge milestone. Once restricted from stepping out of their wills, these women worked around their customs and found a new way of nursing people from all walks of life. 
they were now stepping out of their homes and trading in public places all thanks to cornelia sorab ji indeed a wonderful extraordinary justifying woman her efforts finally bore fruit in 1924 when the legal profession was opened to women in india she began practicing in calcutta and retired in 1929 she left for england and continued to live there frequently visiting india until her death in 1954 yes she fought and fought for justice justice came to her very late but yet justice came to her and because of her justice is coming to all other women who are practicing in law today yes a wonderful wow woman here we come to the end of her awesome journey meet you tomorrow with next wow woman till then keep smiling be happy bye bye